On behalf of Isolt, uh, Seamus, Owen, and Niall and Rory, and the extended family, many of which are here, the Johnstons, the Wilsons, uh, and the McHughes, and many of Patty's friends have, have made it here as well. We're very honored and very proud uh, that we decided to, to name this building after him. But every man who achieves a lot um, achieves it because they have support. Um, and there's one person who supported Patty through a lot of this, um, and that was Isol. I remember one story I tell is I went looking for Patty, I think it was 2005, and I went into the, the house, and Isol was on the floor underneath the washing machine. <laughs> and I said, where's Patty? And she said, uh, I don't know. He's not in the house, and I don't know which continent he's on. Can you please hand me that spanner? <laughs> And she kept everything going and, and had her own PhD and her, and her own career at the same time. So Roy put it that he was a whirlwind of energy. He was that. He was incredible in terms of um, what he did in terms of 100%. Um, and, and that was the, the, the theme of Paddy. Um, I remember, actually, he, he loved going to Donegal um, and relaxing. But I went there. Um, one Sunday that he was there relaxing and um, popped in about three o'clock to, to the house and he said, James, I don't have any time to talk to you. And I noticed in the sunroom he had 50 MRC grants that he was reviewing for a, a panel that he was chairing the next morning in London. And I said, okay. <laughs> and that, that was him. He, he threw himself 100% into every aspect uh, of what he did. And, and that was, as a young clinician, uh, he he had better bedside manners than anyone I ever came across um, and I was incredibly proud of that. When he went to the NCI, he took on the mantle of, of studying um, GI oncology at a level that um, you know, made him in the end one of the top GI oncologists on the planet and discovered, um, a, as um, Ian re referred to, new ways in which chemotherapy was working. Um, and it, then he brought that to Queen's, <coughs> and through his career at Queen's, he adopted um, a transform transformative um, leadership style that, as Chris mentioned, was actually not something that Queen's had ever seen before. Now, what's a leader? A leader is someone who's born a leader. Do you believe that? Probably not. Um, but Patty had something innate that made him a leader. And there's a few aspects to him that actually really describe this well. One was when, and there are some people in the room, um, like Bert, Roy, <coughs> Charlie, Paul, we were involved in this back in 2003, four, when we were trying to figure out how we would actually uh, build this building. We didn't have any money, um, but we were gonna put a bid in um, called the Spur bid to, to raise the money, and, s and s everyone in that room wanted something different. Um, but Paddy stood up and he looked out the window from the Whitler building across and he said, we have to make this about cancer because it's much more likely to get funded and we can use that as a starting point to build everything else. And not only did he get everyone on side with that, but he actually drove the bid, he wrote it, he, he got everyone else together to add their bits, um, and he dr drove uh, the funding, which was, Bert reminded me, 16 million to, to build this building back in the day. And everything did come from that. All the other buildings came from that, so it was a model for success. Um, now, that's leadership. But one other aspect of his leadership was his ability to walk through the building um, and say hi to everyone. Right, and that is very special. And not only say hi, say, hey, listen, we need to talk about that experiment, or we need to talk about you, whatever. <laughs> and as Chris said, <laughs> really referring to me, as, as Chris said, you know, he set a bar for everyone. And be prior to that, people didn't have bars set. And he set bars that were really high for us. And we were, we're never gonna make that. But he set the bar 
this high for himself. And I remember I thought I was doing really well when I brought in almost a million pounds one year. And I went to him for a review. So the money had come from the Wellcome Trust and um, from MRC um, and various other um, pots and sources. And he pointed to the door and he said, James, I, w I don't want to hear about it. You don't have a five-year program grant. Come back when you do. <laughs> <laughs> and as Chris referred to, this is how he drove you, right? Um, I went out with my tail between the legs, but <coughs> next day I got up and thought, well, let's get on with this program grant. And he did that for everyone. He drove it. And he, and he, he brought that to the city hospital on the university floor. He brought it here for the cancer center, that same um, um, way of, of um, encouraging people. He brought it um, then to as Dean of Medicine and then as Vice Chancellor. Now, we, we lost him much too early. He had so much more work to do. Um, and while it's incredibly sad, um, he taught us something in yeah. that. And that is that every moment is precious. And really, you know, if you want to do something, work at it and don't delay in doing it. Now, Owen, um, after Paddy's death, um, found a number of poems, etc. But one, one thing that he found in Paddy's desk, which really described Paddy, was um, dream no little dreams, because they have no power to move men's hearts. And I, using the words of Shaw, the rest of us looked at things the way they are. We complain and we say, why? He imagined things that never were and said, why not? And, and drove that in so many ways. And so as Chris asked me to speak today, I thought, you know, what would Paddy want to be remembered for? <coughs> and I thought of a few things which are key to him. He was really a family guy, first and foremost. He was so delighted when he had his first grandchild, and then that was Harry, and the second one, Abigail. And he would love Jasmine, beautiful new grandchild that he didn't get to see. He would also want to be remembered, I think, as someone who saw illness and found ways to treat it. Not just to treat the illness, but treat the person, and that was him. He also looked for potential in people and tried to make that blossom. <coughs> and Dan and everybody else understands that about him in such a huge way. He also wanted to understand cancer you know, and as many have referred to earlier, to understand it in such a way that you could find new therapies that actually would improve the treatment of it. And I think also uh, he tried to make that happen. We mentioned the spin outs, but there were many, many other aspects um, that we've heard about today because it's all holistic as well in terms of total patient treatment. And I think it goes without saying that he would want his vision to be something that he's remembered for. And I think, honestly, in naming the building after him, that helps a lot. So Yates said, think about the glory of the man. Paddy would have thought that his glory was the friends and the colleagues uh, that he had in Queens. That he would say he stood on their shoulders to do what he did. And as Chris mentioned, all the details of what the center is doing, what the cancer center across the way is doing, what you were all doing, would make him immensely proud. And that would be his glory. And so thank you very much on behalf of the family for the honor of <coughs> being this after the building after party. Thank you very much.